Welcome back, boys and girls. Joshua here. Hey, we are out on the brand new Avenger Bay boat. Some of you know, some of you don't. If you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, you probably already know. But hey, today we're gonna do a walkthrough, starting at the bow, and we'll move aft, and I'll show you all the great things and why I think this is the best fishing machine in the Tampa Bay. Let's take a closer look. All right, so the very first hatch, it's a little one. You open this up, this gives you access to your anchor hatch and also just down into the uh, hole in it itself. Like if you need to run any type of rigging or wiring, your trolling motor, things like that. This is what this hatch is for. And what I like is they actually put a big enough space in here for one of my larger anchors. I can't tell you how many bay boats, even 25 foot bay boats, put these little bitty hatches, put these little anchor ports so you have to put a tiny anchor. You got a big boat, you need a big anchor. Coming down here, so one of the biggest things that I could tell you that I enjoyed about the boat is the feeling that you get that you're inside of the boat. So most of the bay boats on the market right now, you're standing on top of a, on top of a platform. But when you have clients, especially a lot of times when they're very unstable, this bolster goes all the way around, this pad goes all the way around the entire boat but we're standing inside the boat. So when you're fishing, you know, you have support when you're leaning up against it. And again, I don't have to worry too much about someone falling out of the boat. And you'll be surprised. There's a lot of people that just don't have great balance. But coming down, I'm gonna show you here in this second locker. This also is a hatch to get into my anchor, but it also has room for storage. So it can work as either one. You can grab the anchor and the rope, and you can also use it for storage. As we keep continue to fall back, we get into an even larger hatch. Now this is gonna be primarily for your storage. And we have all kinds of stuff in here. We have camera gear, we have uh, everything that you can name, fishing tackle, everything that we need for today's video and today's fishing trip can technically fit in this hatch. Now that's the beauty about the jumbo hatch as we continue to move aft. I mean, this thing is the mega hatch right here. I'm pretty sure I could store Chris in this and we could ride right across the bay and he'd be comfortable. Maybe put him a bean bag or something in there. So there's little separators that are made of starboard that you can literally pull up and then make it one huge hatch if you wanted to. So I thought that was a pretty cool um, feature. One thing that I am trying to get used to is the fact that I don't have my side rod holders or my side storage. And the thing is, I mean, I used it, but I didn't use it really a whole lot. So I'm not really missing it a whole lot. It's just taking a little time to get used to it, not having it. Another thing while I'm up here is around the entire boat, you have rod holders. So we have rod holders from the front all the way to the stern and they're around the entire boat. I really love that. Now, I know I was telling you earlier that, you know, what I like about being inside the boat is the, that you have the ability to feel safer and I don't know, it just, it gives you that, that feeling that you're okay. But if you need to and you wanna climb up and you wanna get a little higher, maybe for a better viewpoint, or like this morning, we were throwing the cast net, this eliminates that you know, obstacle where we don't have to try to throw up and over. So if you're a shorter guy, you could jump up here and you could throw the cast net and have all the clearance that you need to catch your bait. And the thing is, it's super stable. This is a nine foot beam across from one side to the other. So what that means is this is super wide. These gunnels are super wide and I can walk clear across the entire boat all the way around it if I wanted to. And I, and I mean, I don't, I don't feel like I'm walking a tight rope, if that makes sense. Chris, I just caught a gag grouper on the flat. All right, so one of the things that really wears on a captain, especially when they're on the water six to 12 hours is the up and down process. A lot of the bay boats and boats in general have a large step that you constantly got to go up and down when you're baiting hooks. 
Luckily, this is the only small step. It's a tiny one at that, that you have to step up. There's no more going like this, you know, and then climbing up. It, it, it felt like we were doing the stair climber all day long on the other boats. And I gotta admit, it, it was taxing, you know, on the body. But there's one more little hatch that I'm gonna show you as you step down on this little bitty step. Open this up. And this little hatch, you know, you can use this for your uh, fish food, you know, your chum, you know, your safety equipment, whatever it is that you wanna put in here. It's nice and deep. You're gonna have plenty of space in there to store everything that you need to store. The seating on the boat is nice. We have this huge front seat that sits on a 65 quart Yeti. So we use this as our drink cooler. This will open right up, keep all your food, your drinks in here, completely uh, enough space to, to store whatever you need food and drink wise, but it also comfortably seat two, maybe three little people, but two people, it can seat very nicely. And then as you continue to move back, you're gonna see that we got a big old heavy duty half tower on the boat. And this is really gonna change our whole perspective, allow us to really sight fish for some of them redfish, uh, cobia, triple tail, things like that. So up here, like I said, you get a beautiful perspective. You can see everything. Uh, I mean, it's really a great area to maneuver the boat just for the sense that you, you free up space below so you give people more seating options. But it's the real deal up here, guys. This up here will seat about two people comfortably, three small people, um, and it has everything that you need. You have your, you know, your whole tower is just like your, your first station. So the secondary station, we have the Linko trim tabs, the troll mode, start, stop, your throttle, and of, co of course your jack plate trim. But very nice up here. Also, I wanna mention, you got your two cup holders and then your storage right here. So if you wanted to store your wallet or your phone, get into uh, to your access port for your electronics, such as your Garmin or um, Lowrance or whatever you had up here, you could do that right there. All right, guys, so this is the this is the fun station here. This is where we all wanna be. So when driving the boat, hey, check out these new wraps that I just got from Hunter. If you're interested in these, these are, these are custom wraps. I'll leave the link down in the description. You can check them out. No, I'm not sponsored by them. I did pay for them, but he does a really good job. He's been wrapping them for a long time. But we got the center console here, beautiful little compass, so that way we don't lose our way. And then we have a GPS map, XSV. This is the 10 inch. I might upgrade that to a 16, just to really fill all the space. And when I'm tarping, or I'm sorry, when I'm grouper and tarping and snapper fishing, I can really uh, look at that side sonar and get a great visual. Now you have your Linko trim tabs. Got my up and down for my power pole. Your troll mode button for your Suzuki. Got a JL Audio uh, Media Master here and then the Garmin VHF. Now over on the right side, you have your Avenger toggle switches, everything from your light to your bilge to um, your aft and uh, uh, front light, and then your underwater light. So all of that is beautifully organized right here. Very easy to maneuver around. The Suzuki digital gauge shows you everything you know, need to know. Unlike the Ranger, had a lot of that analog stuff, and man, I do, do not like analog. You got your electric start as well. Now, one thing that I really missed off of my action craft that's different with the Avenger is the seat. The seat folds up and it produces a lot more storage. And I'm gonna tell you guys, you wouldn't think that would be very functional, but man, is it a feature that I really like on boats. So underneath here, underneath the console, you have two little hatches. First hatch will allow you to store your cell phone, uh, valuables, wallet, things like that. And this is also where your on and off battery switch is gonna uh, be. And then under here, this gives you access to your batteries and all of the good stuff. So you can get to your batteries, you can get to your amp and uh, all of your wiring that is inside of the console itself. They put up from the factory, they put this little Avenger floor mat in and it's essentially sea deck it's awesome it cleans up real well even though she's pretty dirty right now now up here 
what I did like is they put this storage up on the top of the, the console or the T-top so that way you could put your uh, life preservers and PFDs so that way they're out of the way and they're not taking up a, a lot of your storage. Because usually in other boats that I've been in that they don't have this, oftentimes you'll find that they'll go into a, um, a hatch and they'll just get real mildewy and moldy and this up here seems to help prevent that. So what you're gonna find is that the, there's plenty of rod storage or, or holders on the boat. Not only do we have rod holders all around the gunwale of the boat, but we also have four down on the lower station, and then we have five up on the T-top. So a total of nine right here. And what's cool is that I thought that they implemented was these cup holders as well. So a lot of times when like we put a bean bag back here for clients to ride on, they can put their drinks here and they'll be uh, you know, out of the way as well. But what that does, you know, with other boats, they oftentimes implement the fold down seatings and stuff like that. Uh, but what I find is when you eliminate that, you get a lot more fishing space. And this boat is designed for fishing. So the bean bag, you can just move it out of the way or toss it up on the front and have this area just to walk and or throw the net or whatever you need to do. So under the bench seat, I do want to mention that the beautiful thing about the Avenger Mardars, now don't get this mixed up with the production Avengers that are up north. This is an Avenger by Mardar Marine. These are a custom made boat, guys. The whole of the boat is all land, um, hand laid. So there's nothing, and he takes months to do these boats. So they're not pumping these out of a factory really quickly. Sometimes this could take a six month uh, just to build a boat. So I imagine he only builds a few a year but what I wanted to tell you is you could customize them in any way that you see fit. Matter of fact, you can get a whole tackle storage that goes into the back of this leaning post, but you could also put a cooler pull out underneath of here. So if you want an additional cooler, maybe specifically for fish or something like that, you could put that underneath the main uh, sitting area. One of the most frustrating things as a boat owner is to try to do maintenance on a boat in a tiny hatch. And I can't tell you how many production boats and boats in general just put these small port hatches and you got to try to wiggle your way into like a six inch hatch to change out a bilge pump or a pump in general. Now this hatch is enormous, probably one of the largest ones I've ever seen to be honest. And it opens up to where you could literally step down and get to all of your pumps, your bilges, anything that you need. And you can even have or use it as additional storage up in the front here. So very cool very well thought out. One of the things that was really important to me and I think most captains and fishermen in general, you want a large live well. This live well is a 50 gallon uh, tank and we could put hundreds if not thousands of bait fish in this thing and keep them alive. It's got a dual pump. Um, but oftentimes you'll see in my videos I throw in live fish like we have now, trout, snapper, and in with our bait. So this, this will allow you to do it and keep everything nice, frisky, and healthy for the entire trip. Now, it is powered by a Suzuki 250. Now, one thing that you'll find that's different on the Avenger hull is that they like to go with this 30-inch shaft. The 30-inch shaft is considerably longer than what I'm typically used to, and what it does is it helps, it's on a porter bracket, so the bracket, as you, if you don't know, could come way up to where the prop is almost out of the water and it can go way low. And that porter bracket oftentimes acts as a trim tab on these particular boats. So it helps stabilize the ride that much better. And I'll tell you guys, this ride on this boat is extremely comfortable. One thing you do have to worry about though, is it can get a little squirrely on turns, especially if you're not trimmed out properly or if you have less weight in the back. She wants to get a little squirrely on you, but chop, things like that, the boat rides like a Cadillac. So you're probably wondering what we're, you know, what the weight is. And the factory is gonna tell you it's about 2,200 pounds, that's bare bone. When you start adding the tower and stuff, you're probably looking closer to that 3,000 pound mark. But the Suzuki 250 hops her up on a plane very well. You could do 300, but you want to find that proportionate weight so you can also draft shallow. Now, speaking of draft, she's going to draft about 14 inches. 
we've been in that, so I know that she will draft that 13, 14 inch. We got a single power pole on here. You know I'm a fan of power pole. I'm actually waiting to get my power pole move. Hopefully to have that in six weeks. But we have a single power pole. I am gonna add the additional pole on the back of here so that way we have, um, I mean, it's night and day when you have the one pole over the, the second pole, guys. When you're really trying to get in there and get to that spot and your positioning's important, you know, the two power poles are gonna allow you to line right with where you wanna be. And then in the wind and current, you're not doing no 360s. We had that problem this morning, actually, when we we're catching bait. But overall, beautiful, has a swim platform for you guys that wanna jump in the water and spearfish, because this boat is great for your hybrid. I mean, it's, it's a great hybrid boat. You could take it near shore, offshore, or fish it real shallow. But you got your step ladder down here, so if you're getting in the water to spearfish or go offshore or uh, go snorkeling, you can get everybody back on the boat very easily with that deploying ladder there. One thing I could tell you that's way different than what the Ranger is, uh, you know, was compared to this boat is extremely dry. So it is a self bailing cockpit. If it gets a lot of water in it, once you get up on plane, it's going to suck it right out uh, of the boat. And, you know, if you do dump a bunch of water in here and it goes through the hatches, it's going to go right to the bilge and automatically get dispersed out, out the bilge. But it's super dry. We can have as much weight on the boat as we want, and we never have water standing in the boat. That was one of my pet peeves about the Ranger. So I know, I know you're probably thinking, you know, this boat looks kind of expensive. Now, I'm not telling you you have to have an expensive boat, guys, to be successful at catching fish. But for my preference and being a professional, I want my clients to be comfortable on the boat and I want to be comfortable as well. So I was okay with building or buying a custom boat. Now the price point for this particular boat is going to range from $160,000 to $205,000 depending on how you spec it out. It is a lot of money, but if you're making money, I look at it as an investment. Now, a lot of you guys, if you're just fishing on the weekends, it might not be the best option for you. But if you're serious about buying a really nice bay boat, I definitely consider the Avenger boat. So if you're interested, I'll leave Avenger and Dave's information down below. Check them out, guys. If you're in the market for a high-end Tampa Bay or a high-end bay boat, don't sleep on these guys. At least go visit them and see if it's the boat for you.